Welcome back, trainers, and we're going to be taking a look at Giovanni and what is going on with the Looming in the Shadows tasks here and fill you in on a little bit of information that just may help you here. So yes, he's going to have Shadow Zapdos. And then after this, we can expect Moltres in January. So if you were not able to get yourself the Shadow Articuno, say you completed almost all of the missions within Looming in the Shadows and you're just trying to find Giovanni, and then you are not able to because of all of the decoys. Well, you're simply going to have to find him still. And you're not going to have to do this all over again. And you will get Zapdos. Simple as that. None of the quest lines have changed for this. And of course, the tedious spin a Poke stop five days in a row is still here, unfortunately. Uh, and then you have 15 Pokemon that you're going to have to purify, which can cost you some dust. We're going to be going over a few tips that may help you out to save yourself a little bit of Stardust doing that. And then just the standard stuff, super effective charge moves against the gyms, win three trainer league battles against another trainer, uh, and you know, so on there. And then moving on to the next part here, just a little refresher if you forgot exactly what the tasks were. Say you haven't really done any of them, well here you go. Unfortunately, the <laughs> Giovanni is going to have the same Pokemon, of course, other than the last one. Uh, previously in November being the Shadow Articuno, now being the Zapdos. We're going to be going over counters that you can possibly use. Now, Giovanni is going to have Persian for that number one spot. The possibility for the second one is going to be Dugtrio, Rhydon, and Hippowdon. Of course, it's going to have Zapdos, so this app just simply hasn't been updated. This is going to be a fantastic tool to use. The Go Tool app, that is currently what I'm using it on. Uh, this is going to be probably for newer players regarding the Go Team Rocket stuff. Uh, it has a plethora of different options for you to do here, including egg hatches, what you can possibly hatch, a shiny checklist. Unfortunately, it does not pull up all the shinies. It kind of just, you know, gives you the possibility of which Pokemon can be shiny, and then you kind of just check them off. And then it shows you the tasks that we currently do have. It seems like it's frequently updated. I don't use it all too often, but it is a fantastic tool, a one-stop place to get a lot of your information. So you may want to check that out and it possibly may help you out. Uh, not sponsored or anything. I just thought I'd give it a shout out because it is pretty clean. Now let's go ahead and go over the purification because that can add up for quite a bit of Stardust there if you're you know, just purifying the most expensive ones. Now going through here, we have a Zubat that's going to cost you a thousand. That's probably going to be one of your best options to purify as well as Magikarp for a thousand. As you can see, the uh, Magnemite is going to be 3,000, uh, and when you do evolve them, it will cost a little bit more to purify them. Uh, that Cubone there is 3,000. Some of them are just going to be expensive. The Scyther is going to be 5,000. Probably not the ideal one that you're going to want to go for. Another 1,000 on the Magikarp. Gyarados is also going to be 1,000 as well. And then, oh, I do have that Shadow Lapras. I do believe that is the only one that I've found up to this point, uh, because I don't really fight the Grunts all too often. I do fight the team leaders quite a bit and we're going to be taking a look at some battles here and just throwing a few more tips um i just feel like i just love to do these battles so i'm just going to be bringing them to you uh not continuously all the time but for now right uh then moving along you can see the purification cost for a lot of these pokemon the crobat line is still going to be a thousand even if you evolve it up uh, and then you have the wobbuffets pretty pricey and never going to purify that shadow shiny scyther uh Caesar, should i say Larvitar is going to be 5,000, pretty expensive. Mudkip is going to be 3,000. Uh, so you pick and choose. Uh, you're probably going to want to go with the 1,000 ones, obviously, if you're trying to spend the least amount of Stardust purifying all of these Pokemon. Otherwise, it can add up. And for a return for the rewards for that specific task, once you complete it, it's only going to be 1,000 Stardust, which is not that much at all. Let's go ahead and take a look at some team leader battles using Pokemon under 1,500 CP. Now, this time around... For this specific battle, I did use Sableye and Vigoroth. I never used them before, and the results were pretty amazing. They actually performed quite magnificently. So we will be switching, of course, so we can freeze that opponent, and you always want to take advantage of as many quick moves as you possibly can when you do freeze them up. And remember, you don't need to hit those charges when they have two shields, right? Because they're just going to go ahead and shield them up anyways. At this point, I could have used my charge, but I decided to just finish it off with quick moves at this point. In comes the Hypno. And this Lucario at 1500 CP is going to be putting in work. And we're able to even get off a Shadow Ball because we take advantage of all of the freezing. Now take a look here. When you see the attack hit you like that. 
that means that you did it right. It's not gonna take off energy, but if you time it just right, you would have taken advantage of all the frozen time and you would be able to get as much energy as you possibly can is what you want to do so you can get off more charges, right? In comes the Sableye. Now, what we're gonna do here is just use quick moves. We're gonna hold our ground. We're not gonna get nervous and hit a charge move. We're just gonna finish it off with Shadow Claws because what's gonna happen is we're gonna be able to faint it down with like two HP. In comes the Houndoom. Now it is gonna be weak to rock, so we do have Power Gym. This is gonna be nice, no more shields up. And we gain so much energy at this point, we're gonna be able to get to another Power Gem with the Sableye. Did you see that attack right there on the screen? We did not take damage. Literally, if we did, we would have been fainted out. But if you time it just right, like I've previously stated, you will be able to take advantage of not getting hit at that point. Now we're gonna bring in the Vigoroth here with counter. And I could have used a charge easy, right? But I decided not to just to see how much I can get away with on its counter move. And it actually put a great amount of damage. As you can see, it was able to actually finish it off with just quick moves. And these are 1500 CP Pokemon guys. So uh, not too difficult. I think that set is one of the easiest, to be honest with you. The Hypno, I love going up against it because I can pick my dark type Pokemon, especially my Sphilus, as we'll look at the end here. And uh, it's just fun to use them. Not just your completely maxed out Pokemon. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I have to bring myself to a higher challenge because it just becomes a little bit stale using the completely maxed out Pokemon, knowing that I'm going to be able to do it no matter what. Uh, so doing that is enabling me to have more of, uh, I don't know, quality gameplay for myself. Anyways, going into the next one, Arlo here, we started off with Garchomp so we can make that switch to freeze the opponent up. I uh, don't know why I'm hitting those, just systematically, I suppose. Uh, and if you still don't have one of these Probo Passes powered up and you're looking to do these challenges, highly recommend you do so. The thing works fantastic. All right. And we're not going to hit any of these, right? Because it's just going to shield it up. And we're looking pretty good here. So just your standard Arlo. Um, I need to start coming up with different challenges. You know what I should start doing? Don't use Probo Pass whatsoever anymore. Make it even harder. I'm going to use half my resources doing this, trying to find out crazy combinations where you have to be exact. No mistakes and no room for any sort of uh, slip ups, right? Mistakes. Anyway, in comes the Magdazone here and we're just going to get off another rock side just for the heck of it. I don't, there's no point. It's going to do no damage being that steel type on the Magnazone. In comes our Garchomp with half health and being such a low CP, uh, it's going to take a yeah, all right amount of damage, but being ground and dragon, the resistance on the electric moves is great. And then the Magnazone steel and electric type being four times weak to ground. I mean, it's just basically a one shot with earthquake and we're able to get another one off onto the Caesar here. Now, this is not going to be difficult whatsoever. As long as you have a bit of fire, I bring in the Pobo pass. I, I don't, I don't know what I was doing there. So our Blaziken does have fire spin and then we're going to hit it up with the blaze kick. It's not going to take much to finish it off because it is extremely weak to fire. So I am still on the hunt for that Shadow Sneasel as well as the Shadow Meowth. Shiny, of course. Um, wh what is my expectations? Do I hope to see it? Yes, of course I do. Who doesn't? Uh, but if it's not there, I don't really care. As long as I do the 1500 Pokemon, I'm always happy with that. Even the rewards, I really don't look forward to any specific item. Now starting it off in the next one, going in here with the Spilus. Now if it does have Ice Shards, oh, I think it does. Let's see. And no, no, it's Faint Attack. All right. But if it was Ice Shards, it's going to be doing a lot of damage to the Spilus being Dragon. Uh, so we're going to go in with Lucario, of course. And watch how many Power Up Punches I'm able to get off on the Lucario here. So against the Hypno. So that's one burning the last shield. We have the Power Punch and we're seeing that animation on our Pokemon there indicating that it did do a quick move, but we timed it at the perfect time. So we're able to take advantage of all of the seconds stopped and it happened again. And we're getting off another Power Punch. Yes, it's not going to do much damage, but it's not the point. I just want you to see exactly how this is all working, uh, because once you do get down these freeze animation times, you'll be able to gain as much energy as possible. And this is going to be a whole lot easier for you to do these. I know a lot of trainers are not really too interested in this because it is a bit tedious. It requires so much resources and the rewards are not that great, right? I mean, you can get amazing stuff, but at the same time, almost takes more uh, resources uh, than gained at the end. There is that possibility of the shiny, but it's a very rare thing to happen, right? 
And there is the possibility of you receiving a Univa Stone if you do defeat one of these, so that's a bit of incentive there. Seeing that they were so rare before, now you're able to actually go out there and possibly have a better chance than opening up a box once every week. So, they are pretty rare, RNG is a factor. So I thought I'd just show you guys these battles, furthering your experience and possibly giving you a few tips to help you out going up against these because I know I could take them out 1500, a lot of you as well can do this, but there's people out there who just need as much help as they can going into this. Now, taking a look at some of the counters for Giovanni himself, going up against the Zapdos, Rhyperior is going to be fantastic with Smackdown. Now you're going to want Stone Edge. Earthquake is just what I have on it. Surf is going to be fantastic as well because you will be able to burn shields with that. If you do decide to go in with it first, Scratch is going to be resisted on the Rhyperior. Mammal Swine is going to be great up against Zapdos as well with Powdered Snow and or you can have Avalanche. You can have Ancient Power. Ancient Power is not ideal, but Avalanche is going to be doing super effective as well as the Powdered Snow and you'll be able to charge him pretty fast. Tyranitar is going to be pretty good going up against the Zapdos as well. Rock does not resist electric, so take note of that. A lot of people think that electric is going to not be very effective to rock. That's not the case. It's just a lot of those rock and ground types are mixed up, so there is what it's going to be. Uh, Excadrill, if you want to use that. Rock Slide, I mean, you'll be ground type, resisting it, super effective. Uh, Machamp is going to be great going up against Persian, and also possibly the Rhydon, second place there. And you will want Dynamic Punch, Rock Slide, as well as Counter for the Quick Move. Rock Slide, if you possibly did a switch and you had it in the back with Energy Loaded, you will be able to do super effective damage to that Zapdos there. Uh, and then taking a look at some Grass types to go up against Rhydon and Doug Trio, as well as Hippowdon. You have Roserade with uh, Razor Leaf. It's going to be doing a lot of damage. But then again, you have Swampert. You're going to probably want Mudshot to uh, charge your energy a whole lot quicker on your Hydro Cannon, so you can take them out. But... Grass types are going to be the key because you'll be four times affected to those rock and ground types. And my go-to is, of course, the Venusaur. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Of course, going up against the Persian, Lucario is always going to be great with that power of punch to burn those shields. Thank you for watching, journals, and I'll catch you all next time.